When you think about a wind farm, have you ever asked the question, why here? For over a decade, I've worked on wind projects from California to Pennsylvania. Along the way, I've learned a few things. You and I have an insatiable appetite for electricity. Our country's energy needs keep expanding and the solution is hardly this method or that. It's a combination of all the above. My goal is to help you make sense of it all and to see that renewable energies are a viable source and should be part of ultimate solution. Come with me and we'll look at the issues relative to wind farms and the communities that they serve. This is The Wind Farm Guy. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Wind Farm Guy. Today we're considering why here? Well, obviously, because of the wind that is blowing me around and, and turning the turbines there, wind is one of those factors. There are actually five very basic factors. There are many more, but I can, we can generalize it down to five uh, important factors. One is the wind. You have to have good wind. You have to have strong wind. You have to have wind that is blowing at the right time in, in order for a wind farm to be successful. But you also have to have available capacity on, on the transmission line that's nearby. First of all, you have to have a transmission line that is nearby, and there has to be available capacity on that line. Uh, you look at it this way. In order for a product to be sold, it's got to, you've got to take it to market. And in a wind farm, in electricity, a transmission line is how you get that product to market in order to be sold. So you have to have a, a transmission line that is nearby. You also have to have a third item, and that is willing landowners. A wind, a wind company just can't waltz in and start erecting turbines without permission from the landowners. And that is typically done through a lease agreement with the landowners, between the landowner and that wind company. And so a wind company will come in and lease land and they'll negotiate what needs to happen or what will happen on property. And that uh, you, you have to have willing landowners in order to do that. You also also have to have favorable permitting. Whether we're talking at the federal level with the uh, federal production tax credit or at the state level or even down at the county level, uh, you really have to have favorable permitting for, for a wind farm to come together and be successful. And then finally the fifth item is you have to have buildable terrain. Now this, this project obviously it's, it's pretty flat and they were able to get in here and build the project but there are some areas of the country where yeah there's good wind, there's available transmission, yeah, everything is coming together but it's just too rugged. It's, it's really difficult. You've got to get the cranes in there and the, and the components into the location and if it is too rugged in order to do that it's going to be too costly to build the project. So you have those five things that have to come together for a project to be successful successful. Like I said, there are many others, but those are the five general items. And uh, with those five, you might be able to have a successful wind farm. This is Dennis Stout, and I'm the Wind Farm Guy. Thank you for watching. Working together, we can make good energy decisions and save our planet. If you'd like to know more, would like me to address a particular topic, or if you'd like to schedule me for an appearance, please contact me. For over 25 years, I've been speaking to groups from 2 to 2,000 and would be happy to speak to your group as well. I am the Wind Farm Guy.